Welcome back. Ahead of elections, resorting to name calling is not new. In the past as well, we've seen several such instances where political parties have insulted, humiliated or passed derogatory remarks against each other, their political opponents. Of these, some have apologised, while some remain defiant. But is insulting the voter justified? And is threatening violence against an elected Prime Minister and his supporters pardonable? And the man I'm talking about is not a party spokesperson, not even a local leader in any state. He's a minister in a ruling government. Karnataka Minister Shivraj Tangadagi stoked a major controversy by asking for youth chanting Modi slogans to be slapped. When confronted, the Congress Minister, instead of apologising to the voters, defended his remark. He said, I've said nothing wrong. He accused the BJP of not fulfilling their promise. He said, this is just a way of having conversation. And the BJP, of course, was quick to attack the Congress. They said that the voters will teach them a lesson in the upcoming Lok Sabha elections. Before we open this up, listen in to those comments from the Karnataka Minister. <laughs> नाची आदि Statement सही है दो करोड़ हर साल जॉब देते करके बोला ना वो झूठ है ना इसलिए मैं युवाओं को ये बोला है बीजेपी वाला सब झूठ बोलते हैं इसलिए उसको उसको आके उसके साथ बात करो करके बना वो नॉर्थ स्टाइल में मैं बात किया है उसका कुछ क्या अभी अभी संविधान का बात नहीं किया मैं इसलिए वो स्टैंड सही है ये बात भी सही है कंप्लेंट दिए हैं मैं हम लोग भी कंप्लेंट देते हैं देंगे सिटी रविशो कम आगे हमारा पार्टी वाला कंप्लेंट देने के लिए रेडी है इंटेंसली नहीं बात की करेक्ट उसको समा समा के लिए बोलो करके बोल दिया पर मैं उसको मारने का ये बोलने का इसको मारने का उसका संस्कार संस्कृति कांग्रेस का नहीं है Joining me on this broadcast, Prashant Jia, spokesperson of the Karnataka BJP, uh, Professor Chandan Gowda, professor at the Institute for Social and Economic Change from Bengaluru, joins us as well. I'd like to make it clear to our viewers that the Congress was invited to be a part of this discussion but declined to do so. Let me open this up uh, by asking Professor Chandan Gowda. Sir, do you think what the minister said is okay to say in political discourse? It's not okay to say for anyone to anyone. If you think about it, uh, you know, to say that I'm going to slap someone is something that does not, is not, is not something anybody can defend under any circumstances. Mm. And he did put to say it is a North Karnataka's dialect. If you want to give you a hearing on that, what he means is if someone is under the spell of somebody, they're refusing to see that the promise has not been delivered, you slap them and you wake them out of their stupor. Mm. That's what he's saying. I'm not defending what he's saying. Mm. Now, that said, if, this, if the discussion is to be about standards of political speech in public life, uh, then I think that this is just a starting point where you have to cast your net wide and examine more such examples mm. and see how different parties might actually be invited to evolve a code of speech conduct if mm. you will, within themselves and between themselves. Sure, we do hope that uh, all the politicians are held by the same standard and that's that's not something that we want to compromise on. But because this is a controversy, that's the latest one that we want to bring attention to, which is why we're talking about the Congress Party. Many would say the fact that the Congress Party was not willing to be on this panel is quite telling uh, of uh, what they feel about the comments that have been made by the Minister. But uh, Prashant G.S., yes, many believe that the defence that has come to the fore from this minister where he says this is just a way of having conversation, it's a part of the dialect, when translated to Hindi or English, that's when it becomes worse. But in Canada, it doesn't sound as bad as you make it sound. Is that argument or is that defence valid, do you think? Poonam, firstly, it's become fashionable for the Congress 
to abuse pm modi to stay relevant in today's politics they have realized that people are giving them a grand 40 seats at max and they, they will not even be a principal opposition party in lok sabha even this time so to hide their failures from public they are using it using pm modi to say that and once they abuse modi they know that they'll be in media and there's some traction and if he is saying that it's north karnataka dialect he is insulting the north karnataka people of saying that they always talk in objectionable language is he now saying that the entire north karnataka people have to uh, both their head in shame saying that these how we speak definitely not north karnataka is a very integral part of karnataka and their culture is of utmost how would you say top notch so therefore you cannot just or oh, bring it on part to say that look it is a dialect which i am using intentionally congress is using it right from 2007 mahutka saudagar to recently to kharge calling him kala sam and in between uh, manishankar ayer calling him chai wala then rahul gandhi calling him chaukidar and the list can go on it is become fashionable for the congress to abuse modi to stay relevant and this is the uh, uh, what is the political discourse how congress is now turning it and now it is not about uh, which leader is talking congress is now using all platforms to attack even personally look what their india alliance partner lalu prasad yadav had the audacity to talk he even spoke about pm's mother in a very bad manner so this depicts the mindset of the congress and its leaders uh, when they are not able to counter the development agenda of the bjp they are resorting to personal vilification this is probably political discourse at its lowest sure but like uh, professor chandan gowda was also pointing out that uh, the bjp can't really claim high moral ground on this there are comments like this that have come to the fore from the bjp side in the past as well especially if we talk about someone like sonia gandhi and just this earlier today puna uh, dilip ghosh the bjp mp karan in kolkata has said this mm. on the banner they have filed a complaint to the ec mm. so So I don't think any party is clean on this matter. Actually, if you think about it. Sure, but uh, as far as abusive slurs are concerned, unfortunately, that's a reality we see in political discourse. We'd like, in an ideal world, for that not to be the case. But that's one thing, and it's quite another to actually abuse the water to try and make a narrative where you want to punish the water. Is the water kosher if if the water votes for you, and if it votes for your political rivals, then perhaps some kind of punishment is required? Is that the kind of narrative we want in a democracy, Professor Gorda? No, absolutely not. In fact, even on this uh, count, uh, Poonam, the number of politicians who have said, "Look, if you don't vote for us, forget about getting any help from us later on." How many, you know, MPs and MLAs and ministers have said this across India? So, voter intimidation and victimization is absolutely not acceptable. But you do hear it now and then, and this is why I said, that, you know, if you just focus on one person's offensiveness, offensive conduct. we're not going to we we'll miss the big picture and right now i think we should really need you know all round endorsement of certain standards of political speech making certain Poonam. standards need to be applied prashant you know yes see uh, when professor gowda talks about dilip ghosh statement he's forgetting if he was really a political he should have first condemned the statement of supriya shrinath he does not do this this depicts the mindset of congress and its supporters wherein to say that a highly objectionable post has been posted by supriya shrinath and now the congress and its supporters are not even talking about it instead they are uh, diverting the issue by talking something else and now here shivraj sangadagi threatening the voters which means imagine what happens even at the lower level if congress is leaders are abusing voters saying even if you chant modi's name we will slap you imagine what they would have done to the voter in the normal course when congress has faced defeats in most elections which means probably voters are being threatened saying if you don't do this or if you don't stand by us you will not get basic facilities maybe water crisis in bangalore congress mps Uh, uh, and Congress MLAs may be wanting to do that, saying, "If you don't vote for us, we will ensure that there is no water to you." We don't know by the statement of one of the sitting ministers. Now it is evident that Congress probably is trying to use this as their uh, agenda or toolkit. Who's to answer for that? You can't threaten the voters. 
Right, that's one line that cannot be crossed and there have to be no two ways about it. But what is it, uh, Prashant Ji, that you now expect? You've already petitioned uh, the Election Commission is what we're given to understand. Unfortunately, there has been complete silence from the Congress ranks even at the state level. What more do you expect? Congress will never even accept it. The minister is on record saying that he doesn't even regret the statement. Instead, he is trying to give the justification saying that it is how a particular entire belt of Karnataka speaks. Definitely no. Hmm. There are good people, hospitable people who come from very good, who follow good culture and manners and they don't endorse what Shivraj Tangadagi speaks. So therefore, he is not only insulting and threatening the voters, but he is now insulting the entire one belt of Karnataka saying that this is how we speak. It is completely atrocious to even uh, for Congress to sit quiet. They mm -hmm. should come out and condemn saying, look, this is not what we stand for. But they don't do that. They always have protected leaders who have indulged in corruption, appeasement, communal politics. So even this type of slurs also, Congress is okay to let them go because when it is coming from top down, right from Sonia Gandhi, Rahul Gandhi, Malikarjun Karge, when they use it, other leaders feel entitled saying, if I abuse PM Modi, I will also be relevant. It's a question of being relevant, they're doing this and people would give them the reply by giving more than 400 seats to BJP in the upcoming elections. Sure, and relevant then, or not, the voters will decide. But is this something that the voters do decide on, Professor Gorda? Is this something that is on the voters' mind when they do, when, when they do go to cast their ballot? Um, this is the important question. If the minister is right or not in saying this is a certain way of speaking, we will never speak to the voters. Did the voters mind the fact that he said it like that? Right? I mean, not again, not again to accept what he said. I'm saying there may be a certain way of speaking that appears crude in, in another context, but in that case, it may not have seemed very offensive. In fact, in the rank, in if you have a list of offensive speeches, this may not rank very high if you think about it. The kind of things we have heard. Now you want to rate them, is it? You want uh, to rate the. Uh, no, 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 chop your arms. You know, just, you know. We have heard all kinds of things. I don't sure, want to but, them sure, but that does not make one thing right and the other wrong just because in, in terms of relativity, one would seem much worse than the other. Yeah. No, this is why I don't want to get into the what about me at all. So mm. bad speeches are bad speeches mm. and one can't defend them. But one will make a mistake if one focuses on just one individual and just hold him culpable because it's a larger political culture that is responsible for this degeneration of speeches in public life. And I think if we want to address it head on, we'll make a mistake by holding just this one person in our focus and forgetting everything else. Sure. So whether this is on the voters' mind or not, we'll find out surely enough, uh, soon enough, in fact. The elections are just around the corner. But uh, as far as the Congress's strategy goes, you know, if we were talking about Shupriya Srinath as well. That's something that both of you uh, did come up with as well. Offense may not be the best defense, Professor Gorda, is what many believe. In this case too, when he comes out and says that uh, this is just the way conversations are had, this is just the way it is spoken in Canada and the voters in Karnataka or in that particular belt are not going to take offence. But politically, it is about setting of narratives. Is the Congress losing that fight then? We don't know if it will that fight, but I don't, the Congress has distanced itself from him and allowed him to explain his action and we heard what he had to say. So, I don't, and the BGP has filed a complaint with the EC, let's see mm. what happens. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm no condoning what he said, Unam. Let's be very clear about this. Mm. But all that I'm saying is, uh, you know, he was not insulting the Prime Minister. He was saying, how can the voters forget He's the nomination the voters. and still chant uh, praises of the Prime Minister? That's what he was saying. Just to be fair to what he said. Sure, we do hope that as uh, forthcoming as you have been, the Congress is as well on what their stand really is uh, on this particular comment. I thank you both gentlemen for joining us here on this broadcast and sharing your perspective.